set you free. Do you remember when you couldn't lift your head to heaven and have assurance in your heart, but Jesus set you free? There's an anointing in this house today. I want to make an announcement before Pastor Jody Ann comes. Somebody's going to get healed today. Somebody's going to get delivered today. Somebody's going to have an answer today because we are in the house of the living God. I said, woo, come on somebody. If you are grateful, it's been a few months, actually a few years since I was somewhere drunk, but I came into the house of God and every burden I had left and I could dream again. And I want us to say it from our soul. Oh happy day. Oh happy day. Oh happy day. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Come on, let's sing it, sing it. Come on, here we go, here we go, here we go. Feeling to know you're completely forgiven 
We might remember those things we don't want to remember, but then we can remember that Jesus washed them all away. Oh, we're so grateful. Well, welcome to Glad Tidings Sunday morning service and welcome to our family online. We're so happy that you joined us this morning because we believe that you're part of our family. We just have this little screen in between us. But if I could reach through, I would give you a high five for joining us this morning and a special high five to all of you. Um, happy Canada Day a couple of days later. <laughs> But we're celebrating today. We've got a great service for you. A couple of real important announcements. July 9th at 10 a.m. to noon and then a potluck, we are having a special soul winning power evangelism training seminar. How many people have asked Jesus to come and help them ask Jesus to come into their heart this year? Do you know that that's what we're supposed to be doing? How many people have somebody you know that needs God and you just haven't had the ability or, or the opportunity to lead them to Christ? Do you know that all we have to do is ask Jesus to help us to bring somebody to us and he will help us. You know what? This Saturday seminar is so, so important. I hope every one of you takes the time to just sharpen your skills because you know what? There is a heaven and we want everybody to go there, right? All right. And then Friday, July 15th, our youth are going to laser tag. I asked if I could go. They kind of just didn't answer. <laughs> I guess I can't go. But your youth can go, and this is a great opportunity for them to make Christian friends. You know what? Christian friends are so, so important for this age group. And our youth group is growing. They're excited. They're happy. And they're going to shoot each other. <laughs> with lasers. Make sure that you sign your child up. And then also, right following this service, we are having a dessert fellowship. So stay after, go down to the lower lobby, have some dessert fellowship, because we want to spend some time with you. How many people want to praise God with all their heart? Let's raise our hands. Worship team, I got them ready for you. I've got
There is no one else like you. Come on, we just pour it out. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. She's going to do some miracles. No one else like you. There is no
lift your voices hallelujah 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 Jesus just stay in this you got a report that has taken away your breath your vision your future you had just enough strength to do what you're doing and you were doing it well but you had no room for anything else and I come in the name of the Lord that that thing that came against you it is not true you hear it you hear this it is not true and it shall not detour what God has for you hallelujah you return with his word and you declare all is well hallelujah you declare God's word over you a few weeks ago you heard about the hospital in uh, Florida and a uh, poor man had to have his leg amputated and they did the wrong one and I know a lot of great people the enemy's coming and he's taking the wrong one I just want to say this right now hallelujah I just want to say this real kindly you're messing with the wrong white brother we'll just try that again you are messing with the wrong white brother hallelujah because when you're ugly you'll just get a new set of teeth hallelujah it doesn't matter hallelujah somebody in this place help me out right now hallelujah when you're not real good looking help me Romeo, don't just sit there. You know what I'm talking about. If you're not real good looking, what are you laughing at, Shashiel? If you're not, Peter, don't even go. If you're not good looking, come on, we're fighters. Hallelujah. We believe we either win or we win. We'll try it again. We either win or we win. Hallelujah. Have faith in the Lord your God. Have faith, not in your circumstances. And pastor, did you hear about gas prices going up? Just say this, thank God I have a car. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We either win or we win. When you come to the house of God, God is going to put faith in you. Faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I need somebody to step up with me today and said, I'm going to get the devil on meds. <laughs> the Word of God is your life support system, and some of you have unplugged it to recharge your cell phone. You need to plug in right now in faith. Now, if you're a visitor, I want to give you a visitor package, the Holy Ghost. We need somebody, somewhere, some church in British Columbia that still believes in healing, still believes in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, still believes in deliverance, still believes that God is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. When Pentecostals and Charismatics come liturgical, they, it's over. I said it's over. Hallelujah. If God has done a miracle in your life, I want somebody to stomp their foot. Come on, somebody. Stomp your foot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone say with me, the fight isn't over. It's just begun. I need somebody to come out of retirement right now. You've been retired, and you need to be refired. You want me to let it come? Your husband left you five years ago, and you're still crying over that cheating fool. Say it with me. Thank God he's gone. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Thank God he's gone. And then all the girls, come on, quit feeling sorry for health and say, hey, rich, godly men, I'm over here. I'm right here. <laughs> Jody Ann knows I'm not teasing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is in this place. Somebody just say it with me. I got a feeling. Someone say it, I got a feeling. Hallelujah. Have you ever been with someone that has serious bad breath? Is there anybody here? Where plants died in the room. You know, the Lord, it's kind of interesting. God's people have done some pretty evil things. But the one thing that ticked God off 
was their negative mouths. When, when they began to complain and, and gripe, I, I'd love to go to a trustee meeting, a couple of them a little gripey, and they'd just drop dead. Just drop dead. Pastor, you're always positive. No, the Word of God is positive. I, I read the book, and the book says, my name's written in the book of life. I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. So I'm going to win, and you're going to win. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Well, let me say this to you. Go through it quicker. Huh? You want me to really lay it out? Girl, I don't care how pretty you are and how many times you've had the pluck done on your eyebrow. Help me somebody. Hallelujah. I, 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 I don't care that you went to a special place and got your lips big because they injected it. I don't care what you think like. If you got a negative mouth, come on guys, help me out. Not interested. Have no interest. Hallelujah. God has not called me to hags and nags and old bags. Shout at me, everybody. Hallelujah. We want to have mouths that praise God. If the only thing you can say from your mouth, ha, I'm going to heaven. Then begin to thank God for heaven. Begin to thank God. Your names are written in the book of life. Those of you that have been healed from sicknesses, diseases, it's about time you gave God some praise right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That job came through. It's about time you begin to praise God. Don't worry. People are going to come from everywhere. I'm, I'm having people email me and say, I'm moving to this area to come to this house. The door, about two weeks before, it just finally opened. How many remember the mask? Anybody remember the mask? How many are thankful? No more mask. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is so good, isn't he? How many are thankful to be able to praise God? Hey, Nathaniel Coe is helping me. I'm, Jody Ann and I are working on getting permanent residency in Canada. That's good. It's a good thing. Hallelujah. I am a Viking. Someone said to me, well, Pastor, when are you going back to the States? I want to let you know at the border, I burned my boat. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't care where I end up, I'm staying. My wife's staying, hallelujah. I don't care if my address is Hastings Street, but I'm staying, hallelujah. And I'm gonna preach the gospel. I wanna, I wanna let you know this, I wanna let you know this. Every real prophet, real one, all of them said the revival for all of North America is coming out of Canada. Every credible, listen to me, every credible prophet of God I'm not talking about the prophylize who will give you a personal prophecy for $50 in the mail. I'm talking the legitimate prophets, the real ones. All of them have said the revival is coming out of Canada. All of them. Hallelujah. So I want to make this announcement. Someone stirred up. It might as well be us and it might as well be here. Hallelujah. 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 I, I, I believe, I believe. There are too many churches that the preachers are milk toast panty waste. Huh? What is that? The sissies. They're afraid. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. When we first started 40 years ago, the richest family in the church, they gave 60% of the giving. They loved me. They loved the house. They said, we're called to give. They came to me and said, our father, who is a pastor, just had a massive stroke, but we can't leave here. I said, I'm going to kick you out of the church. you got to go be with that man of God and take care of him. There's nothing to pray about. But pastor, he said you were a man of God and you would hear the Lord. And we said, we won't go unless you blessed us now don't get me mad i'll bless a lot of you thank you lorna hallelujah i bless him did you know that year we were giving given a five million dollar building hallelujah i want to say this to you 
your source is the Lord. No, I want to say this to you. I want to put faith. One, one a wonderful man came to me and said, well, sometimes you talk about money a little, a little bit. And, and, I, and then he said, but I got it. You're a businessman. And I, I, I don't want my mama poor. When my mom went into the rest home, I bought her a new car. And it was red. And she would say to me, well, I know you'll take care of it, son, but I got another ticket. My mom would pull up to people, honk her horn, and say, you want to race? So don't be looking at me stupid if I get a few parking tickets. At least I'm not racing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Online e-transfer, 3456 Fraser Street, or you can drop it right off on Fraser Street. I'm going to give you this. 2 Corinthians 9.10 He supplies seed to the sower. No, hear the word of God. He didn't apply seeds to everybody. He supplies seed to the... Without sowing, you'll never have a harvest. And God will supply seeds to the sower. Don't, don't say yes or don't say no, but I would strongly advise... For you to be a tither, strongly advise. Gas prices haven't begun to go up. Huh? What are you talking? You're putting fear in us. I'm putting faith in you. Hallelujah. If the prices go up and God blesses you and you go up, who cares? My wife gets a little stipend and with that money, we went and worked it out. She gets an automatic deposit of her money. Now, I want, to, I want every man to listen to me because we're going to have a prayer meeting after service. And it goes directly in. But why all month does she have her hand out to me? What? what, what? You're... She said, oh, no, son. Your money's my money. My money's my money. Women... Men, listen to me. Keep your wives away from my wife. <laughs> he gives seed to the sower. I want to say this to you. Food prices are going up. Hello. Well, I, I, food prices are going up. Say it with me. Who cares? Come on, everybody. Gas prices are going up. Alimony's going up. It's all going up. But we don't waver. Don't waver. Believe God. I said, believe God. 1929 in the States, they had the Great Depression. How many have heard it before? The Great Depression. Lines of people out of jobs. Unemployment was astronomical. It influenced the whole world. However, during 19... 29 to 1933, the most millionaires in the history of the United States were birthed during that time. When it's bad, it's good. It's good for you. Now, your tithe says this. You bring it to the house of God. You bring it here. And here's what you're saying. I'm in covenant with a God of more than enough. Hallelujah. More than enough. Hallelujah putting a team together and we're going to give out food boxes again not to bad people not to crazies the food boxes are going just to everyday folks and we're believing God for it how many say go ahead and believe God plug into Jehovah Jireh how many say plug into Jehovah Jireh hallelujah so I want to have you stand with me right now glad tidings get a, get a, get a little more excited about giving Get a little excited about it. Hallelujah. I would, I would, I, I'd rather just kick the devil. I believe in Jehovah Jireh. How many of you? Pastor Shot, are you one of those faith preachers? No, no, no. I'm not blab it and grab it. I'm your needs are going to be met. Your needs are going to be met. Your family's going to be cared for. 
Before your parents die, they're gonna get in fights with all your siblings and all the money's going to you. <laughs> I just check my kids if they get a little mousy. You're out of the will. You're back in the will. You're out of the will. Hallelujah. How many hold your tithe up right now? We're in the will. We're in the will. We're in the will. Hallelujah. He gives seed. That's right. He gives seed to the sower. We declare it right now. Declare the blessing of the Lord to be upon you. I come against the threats coming against Canada and God's people. We're okay. All our needs are met. In Jesus' name, let's give to the Lord. Thanks. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. A couple little things. Pastor Tommy and his beautiful wife from the Arctic are here today. Would you stand? Would you stand right now? Would you play for another moment? I love it when you play. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastors in the Arctic, wonderful people. They're on vacation. They're godly, wonderful people. We bless you. We thank God for you. Doing a great work. But Pastor Tommy, I, I'm going to meet with you tonight, but I'm going to make a little, have a little fun with you. They've been very disappointed how hot it's been here. <laughs> hot. And Pastor Tommy's not a complainer. He just said, it's just too hot. And I said, oh, you like 80 below zero. He said, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's a, that's a God climate. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor, we're thinking about cutting our vacation short because it's too hot. Hallelujah. I know a place that's hotter than this, but nobody wants to go there some other time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, this is very exciting time. I may have all the trustees join me right now. And I may have our one and only Nicole Cortez and her mom and dad join us, if you would. All the trustees, if you would, if you would come. Hey, let's grab some deacons, deacons and staff. Learn to join us, if you would. <laughs> and get closer, everybody. Get closer. Get closer. This is exciting, exciting time. Nicole, I'll say a couple funny things so you won't go into your second language. Yes, sir. <laughs> if Nicole goes, uh, 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 I'll tell you what she's saying. <laughs> Thank you, deacons. Come closer. Eric, the choir will be okay for one moment. Just You guys, come on in a little closer. You look like a firing squad. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want to be in that. Well, first of all, we, we want to say we love you. You have, you brought great joy to me. Nicole, there is another no other Nicole Cortez on the planet. You are a one and only. Your zeal, your love for this house, for God, for your family is, I've not met anybody like you. And I've had an assignment. And poor little Nicole, I've had an assignment. And uh, you've passed the test. And I, I, didn't, you know, I didn't let you off easy. I, 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 I was, you know, we have a generation that don't know order and structure and submission and humility we do we've lost a generation and nicole has brought honor nicole is one of the most incredible people to self-correct she can self-correct she can be in the middle of a, a thought pattern an idea and then she just corrects herself jody ann and i publicly bless you and we don't give that to people you two girls have been really really close i can't believe what the two of you have done. This is not a sad day. This is not a, a demotion day. I'm gonna tell everybody exactly what's going on so uh, we don't. don't How many know what that is? Don't do that. Don't That's do that. what we used to do here. Um, we don't gossip. 
Number one, Nicole will have her complete salary, nothing changes. Okay, nothing changes. It's just money, okay? She is a few credits away from getting her li linguistic degree in language. Yep. And we're not sending her today as a missionary, we're sending her to scout the land. No, no team, nobody can tell someone to be a missionary, only God can. Because right. when it's hard, they'll give up. So Nicole is gonna go to Taiwan. She's gonna be with missionary Cindy and we're gonna cover everything. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Everything. We already have the money. So she didn't have to think about that. Where she lives, everything's taken care of. We're doing it right. Nicole has my public blessing, has my love, has my respect. You know, I never worry about how you live. Never. Don't even think about it. You're a virtuous, godly woman. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I don't bless people publicly. I'll tell you what, you've earned it. Every single test. Oh, poor Nicole. Pastor, Pastor is a five-star general. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just like, no, Nicole, we don't do that. No, we don't, no. Nicole, we got, hey, Nicole, no, no, don't say, don't do, don't, no, Nicole, please, please, please. Nicole. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you've done it. You've done it, you've done it, you've done it. Um, well, is she going to be on staff when she comes back? I don't know. We'll just seek the Lord. We're not worried about that. If... She says, God told her to be a missionary. If I want all the trustees and all the deacons 100% get around her, 100%, all of us, and we will figure out the money thing. It's just money. How many of you have spent a lot of money on rehab? <laughs> How many know three divorces are very expensive? Come on, somebody, put your hand up. Hallelujah. So all of those things are taken care of. I want you just to hear God. I heard there's a little hiccup too about when you can go. So you're not going right after service? Okay, so it might take a week, it might take a month. We don't really care. We don't care. I'm gonna have your father bless you publicly. I'm gonna have Pastor Ann bless you publicly. I have Pastor Kay bless you publicly. And I don't recall the last young person that got that kind of blessing. I don't remember. So we'll start off with your dad, your wonderful dad, hallelujah. Take the microphone. Just bless. Church, now you can stand. We're going to bless Nicole. Hallelujah. Just bless her. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. You committed us the very highest position in this world. Jesus. I pray your blessing. We will release her in your, in your name, Jesus. Amen. Pastor Johnny, if you'd come. There's some wells that we needed a special help to unstop. The well of missions, we needed somebody to stand up and say, God, if if you can use me, I'll be the one that blazes the trail. I'll be the one that unstops this part of the well. And it was you, my sweet girl. <laughs> this is right. This is why we raise our children the right way and train up a child in the way they should go and they will not depart from it. So these are happy tears. These are anticipation. These are believing God for the greatest opportunities. And I just want to challenge every one of you to commit to pray because Nicole is blazing the trail, but there's more that need to go. My sweet Nicole, I bless you. I have had 
the greatest time doing magazines. <laughs> we have a synergy. But Father, I just give Nicole to you, Lord. Yes. And Father, I pray a hedge of protection around her. Yes. Lord, that you would walk with her as every step that she takes, everywhere that she goes, that angels will surround her yes, Jesus. and they will deliver her and they will, they will protect her. Holy Spirit, your word says that you give sound wisdom. Proverbs 2, 7, we declare sound wisdom right. to come upon her. Speak to her, Holy Spirit, like you've never spoken to her before. Lord, we love Nicole, but you love her more, and you have a call on her life. And we recognize it, and we put our stamp of approval on this young woman, and we say, run, daughter, run. Run everywhere that God tells you to run. Be full of the Holy Spirit and grab everything that he sets before you. Miss not a thing. We bless you now. Pastor Gordon, would you come? Just pray for Nicole. Pray for Nicole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Father, we just thank you so much for, Kino for Nicole. And we thank you, Lord, that her heart is so open to you and that she wants to do your will above all else. And as she goes to the field, we pray that you will bless her, that you will use her in Taiwan as she's there, and uh, that she will seek the Lord and she will find what God has provided for her. We pray, Lord, that you will make it so real in her heart that she'll know it and that it'll be no question and, and no doubt. And so, Lord, we just pray this blessing upon her and the hand of the Lord to be her portion and all the good things that you have in mind for her. Make her a great blessing to, to those in Taiwan especially to Cindy. Oh, and may they have good fellowship together and may they help each other and the blessing of God will continue. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. amen. I can have usher. Fear not, my daughter. Fear not, for I am with you. I'm not the God of simply of your parents or the God of other great people, but I am your God. And I have brought you through things you never imagined you could live through. Where you lost your breath and you said, I have no strength, but the Lord would say to you that my hand is on you. No man has any stay over you. We release the angels of the Most High God to be around you. And I declare there will be a prophetic unction. It didn't come by chance, it came by my divine will, for I have chosen you. And there shall be many young couples and young people from this house as you pioneer this new day. The Lord is using you to undo this plug whale. There will be many young people from this house who will go all over the world once again. But we will remember you as the first. You were the one in the dark that said, yes, here I am, Lord. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And you shall know nothing but success. You shall know nothing but success. Mom, fear not. The Lord is on your family. Let fear not grab your heart. For she was never yours, says the Lord. She was mine. And you shall see the hand of God. And you shall see her lay hands on people and prophesy. The Lord would say, I see your faithfulness and I shall be faithful to you, says the Lord. I shall be the God who's faithful to you. And there'll be more than one raised up, says the Lord. For out of your house, I put a Davidic covenant and I shall use your family 
beyond your wildest dreams. I'm just going to obey the Holy Spirit right now. If any young people here have wondered if someday you'd be on the mission field, I want you to come to the altar quickly. Hallelujah. You've just wondered before the Lord. I don't care who you are. You've just wondered. Hallelujah. You don't have to know everything right now. Any young people in this place, hallelujah. You've just wondered, hallelujah. It starts off with, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. That's where it starts, here I am. Hallelujah. I'm here. I'm available. The second thing, you got to clean your stuff up. Okay? Doesn't mean you're bad. You got to clean your stuff up. Because people's eyes are on you. They're watching you. Number one, here I am, Lord. And number two, you got to clean your heart up, your hurts up, your worry up, your fretting up. All those things have to go. God will anoint clean vessels. Hand Lorna the, the, the microphone, wherever Lorna is. Lorna's going to sing this. I'm going to lay hands on uh, beautiful people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you and now, because of what the Lord has done for us, and now let the weak say.
the Lord a praise offering. Stand up and praise the Lord. Let's Hallelujah. for his great works. Hallelujah. What's God doing? Something hey, awesome just in our youth. Hallelujah. Just for a moment. Just for a moment, stand your feet. Just for a moment. And just tell God you love him. Just for a moment, tell God you love him. This is not a performance or a circus. Just tell God you love him. Just tell God you love him. Tell him with all of your heart. Just tell him, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed for a moment. If you're not right with God, you've drifted away, you've been angry at some stupid churchgoer, don't let anything take away what God has for you. Don't let them wrong you twice. They wronged you how they treated you. And now you're being wronged because you won't come to God. If you need to get right with God today, you know in your heart you're not right with God. And you want to get right, really right with God and make Jesus your Lord. Put your hand up. Don't be ashamed. Just put your hand up. I want to be right with good. Good. Put it up. Wonderful. Love your brother. Hallelujah. Others, just put your hand up. I want to be right with God. Beautiful people over there. A young lady here. A muscle man right there. Another young lady over here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all say it, Lord Jesus. Come on, say it, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. I have no excuse. But Jesus, you came to earth lived a sinless life. You chose the cross, shed your blood, rose from the dead. You're coming back again. And I crown you my king. I crown you my Lord. I crown you my God. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. I'm serving you all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Good times, bad times. Jesus is my Lord. Whew. You prayed that and you meant that. The Bible says your name's written in the book of life. If you died today, don't do that. But if you died today, you'd go to heaven. And a whole bunch of people say, what, what are you doing here? A whole people go, how? And you'll say the blood of Jesus. Come on, the blood of Jesus. That's why I'm here. The precious blood of Jesus. I want you to tell somebody in the house right now that Jesus is your Lord. Come on, look at somebody, just tell them, Jesus is my Lord. Say it out loud, don't be ashamed to say it, Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, let's, let's, let's just cash up for a minute. Can we do that? We're gonna take a quick offering online e-transfer for Taiwan, and we're gonna have a boatload of money. Hello. We're just gonna have a boatload of money. Well, how can you send the coal to Taiwan? Because we got money, honey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see a couple of smiles in your face. I'm going to send a couple of you to Iraq if you don't behave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Send you right to Iraq. Or we'll send you to the Arctic in February. Woo! The beautiful Arctic. Hallelujah. I should you an envelope. We're just going to put it in an account for missions, the coal's taken care of, everything's taken care of, we'll just put money in it. Whatever you give, that's plenty. Give, give a loony, that's great. You give a thousand, that's wonderful. You give 10,000, that's better. It's all good, just money, hallelujah. Would you minister? Would you guys minister?
Pass the envelope, pass the buckets, just pass them to everybody. here and I, I, I told them I said you guys are better than any club in town come on somebody help me right now hallelujah hallelujah we, we pray for the Lord I'm just going to take just a moment and uh, I want to say what a privilege for Pastor Dan and I to be in Canada and especially with with you we we fall we've fallen in love with 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 Canada and we fall in love with the people of God I, I want to make this statement because it's going to help you. How big is your God? No, no. See, you, you, you can say it in church. It, it, you, you can say it at a fake prayer meeting. Somebody help me in this place. Uh, uh, you, you, you can say it at a trustee meeting because it sounds good. But I want to ask you a question. How big is your God? Uh, when there's no music. Uh, there's no prophetic preaching. Uh, there's just the reality of what you're going through. How big is your God? 
the word of God says, and I love the word of God, in Psalms 18, 19, he brought me out into a broad place. A lot of you don't know how big God could be because you've been in a little place. With, can I preach today, just for a moment? You, you've been with little thinkers, and you just hope you get, you get in line, and, and you go there, and your favorite dessert is still left before you get in line. But I'm talking about a real thing, a real thing. How big is your God? There's certain atmospheres you can say it is, but we're really in a cage with a small brain saying some things. We don't really believe it. I'm going to say this to you again. How big is your God? How big is he? Pastor Iverson, years ago, I'm pastoring and the church is growing and we have about 50 of the happiest people on the planet and, and the giving is about $500 a week. I give 400 of it, but it's $500 a week. And here's what he said to me. Put zeros behind it, son. I said, what? He put, put zeros behind it. Two years later, it was five million. I look back in time, it's, we're around now about 130, 140 million dollars. He said, put zeros, how big is your God? Right now, you're gonna live in a small place unless you take God's hand in faith and let him bring you to a broad place. Well, I don't know how my kids are gonna go to college. God is gonna make a way. My, my son wouldn't go into law school. Dad, I, 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 I just, I don't think I'm going to accept it. Shut up. You know, what, what do you mean, shut up, Dad? What, what, what are you yelling at me? I have to pay for it. Get out of the way of my faith. We're in a little hotel across the street from the law school, and I just said this, and some of you won't understand this, but I said, Lord Jesus, my blonde hair, blue eyes son, I'm telling you I'm asking for a major scholarship. Some of you don't understand what I'm talking about. Some of you don't have any clue. He said, well, Dad, how do you know it's going to happen? Because my God's big. My God's big. You just stop being stupid, graduate from it, make a lot of money, and give it to your mom. <laughs> how big? Well, uh, Pastor, you don't understand my life, and you don't understand where I came from, and you don't understand how big is your God? Had a couple of these whining. Oh, by the way, my son got, I got a $78,000 scholarship. That's what I say. When it came in the mail, he said, oh, Dad, this is really good. Oh, it's not good, son. It's good, good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know when you open mail and you're dipping, you know God is good? You're going to have to take God's hand right now and have him take you to a broad place, open place. Let me give, go ahead and be seated. Let me just give you a couple thanks. Thank you, choir. Hallelujah. Give the choir a hand if you would, please. Psalms 95 verse 3 says, the Lord is a great God. Psalms 121 verse 1, I will lift up my eyes. Ephesians 3 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably be more than we can ask or imagine. Genesis 13, 15, all that you can see is yours. All that you can see is yours. Genesis 15, 5, it says this, that they took him, God took Abram outside, not in the city. How many have ever been in the country on a summer night and seen the stars? They're different from here. Same stars, but they look different. And he said, count the stars if you can. I want to grab somebody today over your life, over your family, no matter where you come from, I want to grab your hand today, and I want to tell you, look up and count the stars. I want to take you by faith to a broad place. Our church had grown so much, we're having four services, seated about 400 people, we had for each to rent the civic auditorium that only seated 1,120 people. We got into that place, packed it out, and the Lord said this to me, I want you to build a greater building than any building that's ever been built in the history of this area. Huh? 
You know, it, it was really fun when all the bills are paid. Oh, God, you're so good. Oh, God, you're, give me a J. Oh, the V. You know, I'm on television, and now i got to really, how big is my God? And I said, Lord, how do I know this is you? And the Lord said to me, because it's me. I said, well, I, 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 uh, 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 do it with me, everybody. Uh, 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 uh. I mean, it was really fun in church. Yeah. Come on, everybody, over here. Yeah. Over here, yeah. Right here, yeah. Over here, yeah. Come on, somebody. And over here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that again. Yeah. Right here, yeah. I need you to wave your hands here. Oh, and let me hear a yeah. Right over here, oh, yeah. Way over here, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really easy to do it there. So we got some papers together, and the Lord said, we build a building, 2,200 seating, 500 overflow, 300 on the platform, and the largest building prior to that was 1,120. So the county said, absolutely not. Watch this. Yes. Yes. I can use my how big is my God on fake things. Lord, start my car today. Lord, let there be running water. I can use it on a fake, but how big is your God? And the Lord said, I'm going to bring you to a place, a broad place, and I'm going to use you to do what's beyond you. We'll try that again. I'm going to use your life. All those that mocked you, how many weren't the smartest? I was only the smartest in the class when I sat by Brainy Sally. But God said, I, 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 I'm going to take you outside and have you look up. So he submitted some preliminary permits, and the county said, ain't happened. And there was a guy that just hated God, hated the church, and hated me. And he snickered at me. He said, he swore at me privately. And he said, you will never, ever, ever, ever build that building. I promise. How big is your God now? So I said, Lord, take him out. Some of you didn't hear that. You want the translation of that? How many want the translation? I don't care if you run him over. <laughs> I don't care if the ground opens up. I don't care if his ex-wife shoots him. I don't care. Take him out. The county executive was a genius. He was the president of a college. He became the county executive. He visited our church and he saw this kind of worship. He said, there's something about this place. Then he had a massive stroke. And he didn't have any religious background, but one of his assistants said, I think he met with the V. Call him into the hospital. Ask his wife, can pastor come? And she said, oh, bring him, bring him. Bring him. I, I go in there, and he's kind of in a coma and oxygen stuff and, and the whole thing, the needles and the whole thing. And then you, you see this go, his heart rate, and then it drops and the whole bit. And how big is your God? The Lord has told you to do something. I'm going to say this. How big is your God? How big is he? So I just laid hands on him, prayed him, said, God, he has to know you. He can't die like this. And God touched him, and he came out of it. He didn't have to go to rehab. He didn't have to do anything. He missed about three weeks of work. That's more than a lot of you miss in church, but we'll talk about that some other time. We'll deal with that some other time. And, and he got wind that we we're building a building. And he went to the head guy that hated me. And he said, now you, you okayed that permit they sent, did you? Well, I, 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 I want, he lied. I, I want to check with you first, boss. He said, let me tell you something. I don't care how long you've been here. If you don't give that man of God exactly what he wants, I will fire you. Now, we're supposed to say, oh, we need to have mercy on him. Not right now. This is not a mercy time. 
He said, yes, sir. We get a phone call to the church. Can we look at that paperwork again? We want to stamp off on it. How big is your God? No, try it again. How big is your God? Some of you right now, you're in situations. How big is your God? How many want the God will take you outside to a broad place? How many want, it says, everywhere you will put your eyes, which means eyes of faith, the Lord will do it. So then we had to have a neighbor meeting. And Glad Tidings knows a little about neighbors. Yes? Lucifer? And so all the neighbors came in. They came in, we had this big place, gym and all that, and they came in, Pastor, you know, you mind if I smoke? No, I don't really smoke. And one of them, how many knows there's always one with a mouth? How many, how many know what I'm talking about? So she stood up. She said, we don't want this church here. Then I'm going to build it here. And I just said, how big is my God? I said, Lord, give me a word. Not a prophetic word for here. A prophetic word there, right now. And the Lord said, stand up and say, okay, we're not going to build a church, you win. We're going to sell this property to Walmart. It was a prophetic word. And I, I'm not saying Walmart's usually in my prophetic. But Walmart approached us and they wanted to buy our land and they had some alternative land. I said, no big deal. We're, we, 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 want you guys, we want you guys to be happy. We want to have good neighbors. We want to be good neighbors. So we're just going to sell it to Walmart. They'll probably, it'll take them probably nine months before they start building. And the lady goes, I love you guys. I love you. I love the church here. It's so wholesome. It's so good. And she just looked. And her husband there, he was a little slow in the brain. How many, how many girls know what I'm talking about? He just kind of, going on the whole day. He's just kind of sitting there going like, yeah, you know, talking to himself. And he said, Ralph, stand up and make a motion to the neighbors we want it. Huh? Well, just stand up, do what I say before I hit you. I'm serious. It, it, it was just do this with me. The neighborhood was dun da dun dun da dun dun da dun dun da dun They're kooky and they're spooky. And they were just, it was just crazy. And all of them started right, we want it, we want it, we want it. And I left that place and they voted unanimous for the church to be there. And I, I heard the voice of the Lord said, Son, you got to hang out with me more and look up. You got to look up. I said, "Okay, we got the county. We, 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 we got the neighbors, but there's one thing missing, Lord. I just thought I'd bring it to you, Jehovah Jireh. We don't have the money. But I just thought I'd just gently bring that to your attention, you know. And, and the Lord said, "I'll provide." The leaders got at the church; they were builders. They said, we'll take care of it, Pastor. We're right now, we can save $4 million on this building. We can do this, we can do this, we can do this, we can do that, we can do that, and the building went up. I brought Pastor David and Angela to that building about 10 days ago. And they went in there. Whoa. Whoa. That's the building I went from 40 to 80 and in age. And then I came here and I went back down to 45. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How big is your God? What limitations have you put on God? How many want to live beyond your strength, your wisdom, and your ability? Let me see your hands. You want to live beyond that. God will get involved in humanity. How big is your God? It says this in 1 Corinthians. Chronicles 4, 9 and 10, it declares this, that Jabez came from a difficult place. There was no one who had integrity and honor, nobody. Everybody were liars and cheaters. He was the only one that had some semblance of decency and order. And his name is Jezbaz, Jabez, which means this, it means pain. His life was painful. But he stood before God and he said this, bless me. Somebody needs to hear this today, bless me. Not because of who you are, but bless me because of who you are, God. 
God, I'm asking for your blessing to be on my life. Is there somebody here? It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter your aptitude. It doesn't matter your failures. You would stand to your feet today and say, bless me, God. Is there somebody who would stand in the presence of God Almighty and just say, God, bless me. I, I might have came from the wrong family. I, I might have came from the wrong neighborhood. I, I don't understand everything. I didn't get the education. Everybody, had. oh, but God, I ask you to bless me. Bless me. You may be seated. Then he said a second thing. He just got real with God. He said, enlarge my borders. Huh? Enlarge my borders. Can I tell you what that says in the Hebrew communication? It says, I haven't seen it yet. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it's about. I've never done it before. I've never heard about it. But God, enlarge my borders on the things that I don't know and I don't understand. Enlarge it. Enlarge me, God. Third thing he said. God, put your hand on me. Everybody look at me. Not here for once. God, put your hand, I will try that again, not here. How, how many have known the God back here? Hallelujah. But how many with the hand of God? Hand of God. This is going to sound arrogant and boastful. The hand of God is on me. Huh? The hand of God Almighty is on my life. Well, are you something special? Nope. How many want to hear how Pastor Schott keeps the hand of God on him? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm stupid, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, God, that was wrong. I, I have a bad attitude, God, okay, my heart's hard, okay, she's right. That one's hard, that one is hard. Right, to that one takes all my faith. You're right, hon, you're blue. I wanna take my tongue, cut it out, throw it on the ground, don't say that to her. She'll have, a upper, she'll have an upper hand. I mean, don't want your wife to have upper hand, and she is right, though, oh, be quiet. God, put your hand on my life. How many, when you get up, you want the hand of God on you, huh? How many here want the hand of God wherever you go, whatever you do? How many want the hand of God on your, th on your thoughts, on your connections, on your dreams, on your future? How many want the hand of God? <laughs> Got to have the hand of God. There's great orators and preachers until they can't find new material on the Internet. We need somebody that has the hand of God. They stand up and say, God, I'll do it. Uh, somebody here needs to say, I'm looking up Hallelujah. as far as I can see. Glad tidings is not about glad tidings. Oh, God, I hope somebody comes, and I hope, I hope we make it. I hope somebody's not going to leave. I, I hope this. I wouldn't have any part of that. This is a nation church. You don't understand that. Well, you know, I'm telling you, it has influenced churches all over this nation and around the world. Well, it doesn't look like it now. Well, you don't see what God sees. You see, you have boundaries, but there's some of us that don't have boundaries. We don't have limitations. Hallelujah. There's a few of us, we don't operate in what we can see. We operate in who we serve. Had a guy a little slow. He had ambition. Not horribly slow. He wasn't an American. But just a little slow, it took him a half second to catch it when others would see it, obviously. And he, he, he came to me and he said, you know, Pastor, I, my business is going good. I'm making about $125,000 a year, but God just told me that he wants me to have 10 of these. Huh? And he told me that five of them Whatever comes into those shops, we're supposed to give directly to the house of God. Now, I want to let you know what I said. Well, maybe God's talking. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Thank you, you know. What? He said, God just is enlarging me, Pastor. Wouldn't you know it? Some guy had nine businesses, and he went to him. He said, if you give me this retirement, you can just have one. 
This guy became a multi. How many don't mind being a little slow if God makes you a multi? Come on, somebody. I need somebody to help me this place. How many don't mind being the, not the sharpest knife in the drawer? How, how, how many don't mind being out in the water and you only have one oar? Come on, somebody. As long as a hand, come on, somebody. Say, put your hand on me. Come on, everybody. Put your hand on me. God, put your hand on my life. Bless me. Enlarge my territory. Keep your hand on me. And then it says this, and some of you are not good at this. Keep evil people from me. Just because they come to you and they say, Shalomi Lakam. Should about a Honda. The Lord be with you. I saw a bumper sticker, and here's what it says Lord, save me from your people. I was with possibly the number one attorney in all of Vancouver, genius, loves God with all of his heart. He said, attorneys can make money, but no one is getting saved because they never see any character and honesty in the Christian business people's lives. He said, when you do the entrepreneur, I'd like to teach on a class on being a Christian. <laughs> being a Christian. Wouldn't that be just shocking? A, a, a realtor was like a Christian. A business person like told you the truth. There was a guy and he was short of money and he was selling things and the Lord said, give him double for what he's asking. Uh, Lord, I gotta ask my wife first. You know, I, you know, <laughs> how many of you guys act like you ask her? But you, you don't until you're in trouble. And the Lord said, I want you to give him double. I want you to give him more. And so I gave him a couple hundred dollars more. And here's what he said to me. I haven't liked Christians because it's all about what they can get. And I want to know your God. We'll try that again. God wants to keep evil. He'll give you discernment. There was this guy, phenomenal guy. Just everything about him, talented and gifted. And, and the Lord said, do not. He's in between. Don't invite him to your church. And he just kind of like, oh, I heard your church and you're such a great preacher. <laughs> We're going to give you another chance. <laughs> you're just such a great preacher. You're prophetic. Glad tidings right now is being pathetic, but I'll give you another chance. Hallelujah. And he said, I see you on television. I'd like to travel. I'd like to support. I, I'd like you to do this. I'd like to do that. And the Lord said, do not take a dime from him. And I always say, God, how do I know? I really want to know this is you because you wouldn't think it. He said, well, I'm thinking about coming to church. And I said, don't. A month later, he got arrested for things that we're not gonna talk about from the pulpit. I wanna let you know not everybody comes your way that says the name of the Lord is pure. I'm gonna follow you right now. Not everybody is. Not everybody is a person of what they say is who they are. Not everybody. Let me give you the last part here. Are you hearing this today? God granted him what he requested. How big is your God today? I'm not putting fear in us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say it in love. Do not look to America for security. I'm gonna tell you this right now. I have, I have come from there, I've been honest, but I'm telling you, there is a revelation that nation is on fire right now. Trust me. And the nations that were in power, you're going to see a change. You're going to see a switch. I'm, prophetically, I have the right. I don't prophesy about Canada, but I can prophesy about the U.S. They're in the worst trouble of their history right now. And you're going to see things. You're going to see hatred. You're going to see prejudice. You're going to see evil that you didn't know. Imagine, because America has not been godly. 
and their prosperity was because of God for the purpose of missions. And they have abandoned their God. They've taken God. I don't ever preach like this there. They've taken God out of their schools. They've taken God out of this. They've made right wrong and wrong right. And I'm telling you, do not look to America for your hope. You want me to push it? You guys want me to push it? And who you think should be elected is the answer. I'm going to tell you who's elected. Kneeling before the King of Kings is the answer. The Lord Jesus Christ is the answer. Hallelujah. Submitting individually and corporately to the Word of God and the promises of God. And I'm going to say this to you. I want you to say, my God is bigger than where I live. Hallelujah. My God is bigger than what I've done. My God is bigger than my circumstances. My God is bigger than my bank account. My God is bigger than my education. My God is bigger than the past. I have not known anything about revival. I don't understand how not to have the Holy Ghost in revival. I don't even understand it. And God's been telling me, it's going to be greater here than it was there. Stand with me. Hallelujah. 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 You can, you, you, you can look like deer in a headlight. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to thank God Almighty you're alive. Hallelujah. You're going to see the greatest revival, and it ain't going to come out of South America. It ain't going to come out of the U.S. It's not going to come out of Alabama and Georgia. It's going to come out of Canada again. You wait and see. God brought God-fearing people. Listen, some of you right now, you promised God that you would be on fire for him. You asked Jesus to get you to Canada. You said you'd be godly, but you ate too much food. You loved the amenities too much. Jesus, when you came, he was your Lord, and now he's not the top. And I want to let you know the promises you made. You said, God, if I could come to this great nation, God, I'll serve you and be in your house all the days of my life. Somebody needs to talk to yourself right now and say, wake up. Somebody needs to say, wake up. We've been really good about religion. But we need to be really good to please God. We need to please God. I'm 66, going on 46, baby. I, I haven't begun to hum. I haven't begun to preach. I haven't begun to prophesy. I haven't begun to declare the goodness of the Lord. And if you want to see a real revival, then you got to put on your faith and your praise once again. It's a catchword revival. I don't want it to be a catchword revival. I want it to be reality. I want to say to you right now, where's Pastor Tommy? Lift your hands to God. Stand to your feet. Let a new healing go into your body right now. Let there be a supernatural healing, son. Let there be health. For you've cried in the night. And you have said, well, maybe I missed it. I'm going to tell you right now the greatest revival. It will even overshadow what happened in years ago. I declare right now there will be young people from every direction and there will be a takeover. They will begin to praise God like you've never heard before. You and your wife will be young. You'll say, we got to live. We can't miss this. There is going to be a wind from the north that will touch hearts and bring them to the house of God. You're going to be in the middle of it. You're going to see a mighty hand of God. And your wife will stand and say, thus says God. There will be a new prophetic in the house. Hallelujah. Be strong and see what your God can do. Right now, God's been speaking to people about your businesses. Hallelujah. He's been talking to you about your life right now. Lift your hands to God and say, God, you're bigger than I've let you be. Uh, you're bigger than what's happened to me. I'm not going to cry anymore. I'm not going to be hurt anymore. I'm not going to be wounded anymore. I'm not going to blame anymore. But I say, God, move by your spirit in my life. Hallelujah. Those have been a glad tidings a long time. I want you to, by faith, to say our best days. Ha. Hallelujah. The best days. Ha, ha. Hallelujah. The best days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The best days. Hallelujah. Bless you. Thank you for calling us, Pastor. Judy Ann, thank you for coming. It would have been difficult if you wouldn't have. Thanks for coming. 
Thanks for not being an ugly pastor's wife. I'm grateful for that. No, no, she, no, 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 no. I'm telling you right now, she's arm candy. She's wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you, sweetheart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Kay Gordon. Thank you, all the trustees. Thank you. Thank you. We've got lots and lots of new family. Hey, this is the holiday weekend. I'll just say it like some of you can ask, but we still have church. We still have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. McQuire, you want to close this out? I'll give the benediction, but there's a revival Amen. in the land. Join us downstairs afterwards. We're going to have a dessert fellowship planted in the house of the Lord. You'll flourish in the courts of our God. Hallelujah.